Welcome, my name is Dr. Craig Seal and I am a professor of management at California State University San Bernardino in the Jack H. Brown College of Business and Public Administration. And I'm here today to talk a little bit about a concept my colleagues and I have developed called personal interpersonal capacity. But before we go too far, I wanted to read a quote from Aristotle which sort of sets the stage for this entire construct that we're gonna be talking about today. Those who possess the rare skill to be angry with the right person to the right degree, at the right time, for the right purpose, and the right way are at an advantage in any domain of life. What Aristotle's talking about, and which my colleagues and I have been developing, is this idea of individuals who are able to recognize and regulate their emotional information and behaviors to achieve individual goals through social interaction. What we're theorizing is that people who are more self-aware, are able to be considerate of others, who can connect with other people, and foster positive change are going to be an advantage in any domain of life. And our construct has four different factors to it. And so these factors are self-awareness, consideration of others, connection to others, and influence orientation. In self-awareness, what we're looking at is, do you know how you feel? Do you know why you feel? Are you able to correctly identify your talents and your aptitude and what you want to be doing and what you're competent at doing? That's the self-awareness dimension. The second is this idea of consideration of others. Here we're talking about can you truly empathize, understand, walk in the shoes of other people, and can you subsequently regulate your behaviors based on that information? The third factor we talk about is this idea of connection to others. This is the idea of are you comfortable, sociable, do you have a breadth of relationships that you can draw upon, but also we're looking at depth or intimacy of those relationships and those impact the connection to others dimension. The last dimension is this idea of influence orientation. And we talk about influence, we're talking about self-behaviors, you taking initiative personally, but also it lends to the idea of leadership and the idea of moving others forward. And these four factors interact into our model. And so when we talk about the model itself, what we're looking at is if you try to take action, if you try to make some sort of change, something different in your organization, something that you want to achieve, some goal that you want, that's the first stage is the influence orientation. But you can't get to your outcome within an organization without having relationships. And so what we talk about is that influence is actually mediated by the relationships that you have in your organization, meaning you have to act through people in order to get things done. That influence to connection to outcome relationship is then what we call moderated by both your self-awareness and your consideration of others. Meaning, if you have greater self-awareness and you have more awareness and consideration of others, then the strength of those outcomes can either go up if it's positive, or if you're not very self-aware, or you don't have the ability to empathize and consider others, then the outcomes are potentially reduced. And so the model is a mediated, moderated model whereby your actions are going to be impacted by the relationships you have with others, your self-awareness, and your consideration of others. And the outcomes that we're talking about here are potentially reducing some of what we call dysfunctional or negative conflict within organizations, and hopefully increasing what we call the more meaningful. In the end, what we're looking at with our model is it provides both a diagnostic and a developmental guide. As a diagnostic perspective, let's say that you tried to do something in your organization as a manager or leader and it failed. You can look at the model and try to identify where was the weak point. Was it the influence? Was it the relationship? Was it the consideration? Was it the self-awareness? Where in the model did I potentially go awry which might have led to me not being as successful as I want? So in that case, it can serve as a diagnostic. It also can be a developmental tool. We find in our research that people tend to favor one potential factor over another. Some people are really engaged in influence, but not so much at connection. They're very good at considering, but not so much at self-awareness. So the model also provides an opportunity for managers, leaders, employees, students to look at where are the areas that I need to develop going forward. 
Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you today. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about our personal interpersonal capacity model, and I encourage you to take a look on the YouTube channel of some of my colleagues and some of their work as well. Thank you very much.